welcome to another episode of the Kodiak Classroom. In this session, what we're going to do is go over how to burp a pressure gauge. So what do I mean by that when I say burp a gauge? Well, pressure gauges often come glycerin filled. And the purpose of the glycerin is to help dampen the needle during high vibration applications. So if you had a gauge here that was on a pump or maybe a compressor that was vibrating a lot, the needle would also shake back and forth, which would render it very difficult for the person reading it to see an accurate reading and know where that needle is actually pointing. So all they do, all the factory do it or any manufacturer will do, is they'll take the glycerin and fill it into this fill port here, fill it inside the case. And all that does is it helps dampen the needle during high vibration and keeps it steady, so it allows for a good reading. This is a very inexpensive way of solving this problem. However, glycerin naturally expands and contracts due to temperature changes. So whether you know, the gauge is sitting on a warehouse or maybe during shipment or maybe it's outside for a while or whatever, small buildup of pressure can happen inside the case of the gauge. This is any manufacturer that sells gauges runs into this issue with glycerin. It's not that big of an issue. The only side where it comes into issue is maybe low pressure gauges. So higher pressure gauges like 100 PSI or above typically don't really see an issue with this small pressure buildup. But smaller pressures like 15, 30, 60 PSI even vacuum, or in this case a compound range which reads both vacuum and pressure, can the small buildup of pressure can push the very sensitive boron tube in here and move the needle off of zero. Now this particular gauge is a compound range which is 30 to 30 and I pulled this right out of the box. Now normally if you were to do that you would have thought that you may have gotten a bad gauge but that's really not the case. All we're going to do here is burp the gauge. So if you look here the needle is pointing somewhere in between you know the 10 and the 0. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a flathead screwdriver or long fingernail if you have it and on top there's a fill plug here. And all you need to do is push this fill plug to, a, uh, uh, to the side to allow the air to alleviate from the case of the gauge. Be careful not to push the plug all the way in. If you push the plug all the way in and you can't get it out, you're probably going to have to buy a new gauge. The other side of it too is that when you push this, air may come out or glycerin may come out, a small amount that is, and the cap may fall off. All of these are perfectly fine. Just make sure when you put the cap back on that you don't push the cap all the way through the case of the gauge. So we're going to take this screwdriver, we're going to push it aside, and you're probably going to see this needle move back down to zero. So I hope you saw that. But what it did is it moved back down to zero and maybe heard the air come outside, uh, out of the case of the gauge. So gauge is ready to go. Um, if you have any questions, you can visit our site at KodiakControls.com. And thanks a lot for listening.